Piece of road. That little white digit there, that's six, that means it's four more on there, and that would have been it. You have to try and keep it exactly stable because if they watch it and it's all shaking around, it's gonna. I think I'll have to do it. I'm gonna have to try and drive round the roundabout and hold the camera. Okay. No, it's just at that angle, you're not gonna get it, are you? You change the gears, I suppose. <coughs> Be going around a bleeding round in the wrong lane. Yeah. It's gonna go. It's going. It's going. It's going, lad. Oh, it's hi, gone. Look. It's it? gone. He's clocked up the slip road of the M6 northbound. Swamp is just clocked. All the notes. Must have a clocking party. It's round it went. As we just joined for a car show on the 5th of July. We celebrate. Swampy goes round the clock. 11,000 miles worth since May 2014 as we join the M6 northbound. And that was that, that was the day you will always remember the day you were when your car goes round the clock. We were heading northbound on the M6 for a car show in Leighton Hall. And as we join, we accelerate up to full speed. There's the, the Queen's flotilla now as we join the Queen's flotilla. There's the Queen waving. <laughs> There's Prince Charles waving to Swampy as this flotilla goes by. And what's that we see there? B&M Bargains also joining in the celebration of some 99 pence <laughs> speedometers that they've got new old stock. And the rest of the classic cars in huge convoy now as they flash the lights and put the water cannons on the swampy beeps his horn and celebrates his round the clock would Ford ever have known when they let the cars rot how many would actually make it to clock themselves before they rotted well we proved them wrong with swampy There's the President of the United States who's also flying by in his Air Force One. The Royal Royal <coughs> Arrows. Royal Arrows? Royal Arrows, yeah. Red like Arrows ones. fly past there now as they make a loop. <laughs> a zero shape in the sky. Pete's had too many smarties by the sound of it. There we are, the Vulcan. They fly past by the two Spitfires and the Vulcan now. <laughs> There's Concord. Everybody's out. Across the M6 to <laughs> celebrate Swampy going round the clock. We did it, we, we're there. We're breaking up for a bit. I'm your driver. Yeah. There's your zero. We need the Royal Wave back to Prince Charles. There we are. Oh, he shot past on his motorbike. We power that, wheelies that was from him. the bikes. <laughs> power wheelies from the bikes. Zero, all the zeros, all the zeros. Smoke 
pouring out the back of Swampy now as the big ends have gone and the rings have shot. <laughs> Knocking like a trooper. Tap 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 tap. Big ends have gone. Gearbox gone. Engine overheating. Up a slip road. That's it. We're over and out for this little bit. See you later. See you at the car show. Well, I may as well film the car show now. Mightn't we? Yeah, definitely. See you. See you at Leighton Hall. Bye. Bye. Excuse the bumpy bits. Can you see it? It looks so retro. Can you see the cartoon? I can. I can see. I can some, see them over there. I can see some cartoon. If that's uh, Tiswas. Who the heck's Tiswas? Tiswas. There's Len. Len's ninety odd. Is he? Yeah. Did he go to uh Cortina to Cortina? Yeah, he did, I remember that. Linda, there won't be any tickets left for this bad boy. I thought Mr Whippy. Anybody see which way they went? No, I didn't actually. This keep is high visit. Keep it steady, keep it steady, don't let it wobble. I'm trying. Really steady. Ah, oh, love, do you see some Ford Cortinas coming Ford this Cortina. way? Yeah, straight up, sir. Sir. So, oh, it's right up there, thank you. Straight up. <laughs> the accent. That's without killing people first. There's the Cortinas there. Right over to the side of the field, like, you know. Oh, that. Right, up that yonder, like, you know. Up yonder? Messing with a big, bloody big steel girder. Victorians, you know. You know. Now like smell of cut grass, eh? Aye. Cross country, off road, four wheel uh -huh. drive. Fair rally driving. There's a now. Mark III there, Mark III Cortina, orange one. Oh, Come yeah. Up. It's Paul's. Do you know him? Just pan around to Paul. Is that his wife? This is the blue one there. Please, line up. Oh sorry mate, sorry about that, I just saw someone I knew, I do apologise. And with the club it's just over that side. Oh okay. Alright then, no problem. Okay. Job plus number one. Yeah. Well oh, we're out of that show. Scooped up a little, little memento. Just a little winning 70s. one. 70s. So Swampy gets another little mini trophy. The one's wobbling all over the place. Class in the first in the 70s class. I've got quite a few for Mark Woodward's events now. People think I'm in cahoots with him. So and um, 104 miles already already on the dash. A downpour of again. rain. But it was not a bad show, that one. Worked out pretty nice, that show. Chucked it down just at the end, but we got through all right. So, uh, around the clock and uh, a celebra <laughs> celebratory first uh, out of the 70s category. Not a bad day. And uh, 105 miles on the clock now. And that was the end of that till the next show. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of that. Uh, around the clock video for you and a little couple of clips of us just rolling up at the the car show up at Leighton Hall and that was in the Lake District there um, so you can see why <coughs> people said excuse me sorry people said you know how you're getting all these miles but you look at that clock now that's on 100 and 109 already um, 108 already and that's just one day I mean two 
two car shows every weekend through the summer and you're soon uh, you're soon clocking them up you know and um, a lot of my shows are long distance ones so you know typical day you could you could whack on 250 miles if you did a uh, a Midlands show for me a lot of the shows are, are needing to travel to um, and don't forget I like traveling in, in the car as well so it's easy clocking up that's why it's uh, gone around whatever over 10,000 miles since May 14 so yeah that's that's why uh, I'm clocking them up quick the cars holding out well done a, a, even a little bit more soundproofing as well I found a couple of little air gaps which were letting in some rushing noise so uh, plugged them up just around the steering column through to the bulkhead and the um, brake servo rod um, I suppose it could do some kind of grommet there but there isn't one on the inside of the bulkhead so I, I made a, a grommet and plugged that hole which helped got it nice and quiet even quieter than it was so uh, there's no bumps rattles or squeaks we're still holding out nice still a really good drive so uh, 10,000 mile report I'd say all pretty good I'll give you a walk around of the car We'll park it up in the garage in a sec and then I'll just give it a, a bit mucky because it pissed out so it rained heavy before so uh, it's not going to be shining on the outside but the, the bay will be clean see you in a sec That's your, your 10k walk around. I think the only thing I'd change probably is I've had these tappets set a couple of times now and uh, they last for so long then they start to go again. I'm wondering if the, um, the head's got some valve recession on it. Um, I'm in doubt as to whether or not it actually ever was unleaded. Uh, looking through my receipt that I got, I can't actually see the work that says valve seats. So I might take the head off and have a look because I'm not so sure. And I've set the tappets quite a few times and they last and then they, they come back. Um, compression's good and everything on it. I've checked all that and runs really well and it's getting good MPG. So I don't know, a light tapping sound that seems to... Uh, keep coming back but I think I'm sure it's in the head so I'm gonna I'm gonna investigate the head at the end of the season but uh, that's a 10k walkabout and we'll get you some new videos shortly when we get the new project over and out whoops forgot to mention a couple of, of interior mods uh, on the LEDs yes yeah, so that's what I knew there was something I'd done gauge illumination right these LED bulbs that you buy They've not been lasting, they've been, they've been flickering and uh, popping. That's the LED bulbs. Um, looked, looking at the bulb fitting itself, it was poor quality. So anyway, a bulb in this gauge, these are the pre-facelift, then the early cone perspex cover gauges, that's with your, 
Uray's Dome. They have a, a logo on them, which is just here. Let's have a look. We'll do it on the amp gauge because that's the clearest one. If you look at that amp gauge there, um, the way it's designed is that there's a light cut out at the top of the bezel. This is in three parts this gauge, or four parts actually the backing body, the internal gauge and dial, an outer bezel, and uh, sorry, a perspex and an outer bezel. There's a slot cut at the top here, you can just see the halo effect. That's to put light through the perspex and illuminate the little gauges, logos of the gauges. So the, the um, how can I explain the perspex on the gauge? It's got sort of is it etched? It might be etched into it. So there's your petrol pump. Now that perspex it relies on total internal reflection. When you put light through an object, it bounces within itself, refracts, and that tends to. That's not backlit. The the gauge symbol is not being lit from behind. It's being lit internally in the plastic as it lights up. So you can actually create with the LEDs, I use two LEDs soldered together and um, as you rotate the LEDs, because so an LED is very directional light, it's not spread beam, it's quite a focused light on an LED. I was able to get it by putting a white and a blue LED together and then making my own little bulb, a cartridge type bulb it was in the end, with some very high quality LEDs. If you twist the assembly in the light socket at the back you can get it so that the white LED lights the gauge illumination up here, the perspex, by shining exactly through the cutout in the bezel, which is how it's designed. And then the other blue LED bounces off and lights up with a sort of, you get a mixture of blue and white, so you get a sort of ice white blue, which is what I wanted for this interior. So filament bulbs don't have that effect as good. Uh, as, as it does with an LED, you use the fact that it's directional to your advantage and you shine it straight into the perspex cutout and then the gauge comes to life, you can see, I hope this camera picks it up but you can see how those logos are standing out in white yet the back of the gauge is in blue and that's because I've got a pair of LEDs together white and blue and then twist them in the tube that you make a little tube with the LEDs inside which is the same diameter as the bulb holder that goes in the back of the gauge a little bit of plastic tubing I used glue the LEDs into that and then push them into the gauge here then rotate the pair of LEDs till you get the effect that you want I used blue and white and rotated it until the symbol was white and the, and the face was a mixture of blue and white so that, that was improvement, those will last I think there's 100,000 hours 70,000 70, hours on those better than the China LED lights that I had and again for the dashboard I've done a mixture of blue and white for that so they won't fail and uh, that's one of the improvements I've changed the bezel on the radio to the correct one I didn't like that chrome one so a couple of small internal mods um, but other than that it's standard from the, the, the last uh, video I showed you so uh, not much difference so just thought I'd let you know about those those gauges there. Okay, I might put a video up on how to build those bulbs if you if anyone was interested in those. A great idea. 12 volts, two LEDs in a tube, some potting compound or glue you can use, two on 560R resistors and um, connect connect up to you. I built a miniature loom in grey tape so it looks forward. Even put a logo sticker on there and then in the LEDs go to the back of the gauge and then you just spin them till you, you get the right effect works really well and uh, lasts forever okay just a little footnote so that's a review a 10 a 10k review just see how how the old girl's holding up everything's everything's held up well dash top's not showing any signs of wear with that paint effect that we did um, maybe a couple of marks on the console there where I've just chipped it just putting stuff in there um, but they are easily touched in. I might redo the console at, one, at some point. Uh, seats, some crease marks, but they, they tend to disappear after a day. It's like if you just got off the seat and you get a, a crinkle. And a, a wave in the beading, I suppose you could pick that. 
um, that could have done with being a bit more taut I suppose uh, minor niggles but I might work on that I might work on that over and out for now uh, highly highly recommend LED tail light and registration light bulbs even recommended by the cats they like them too uh, big difference your plate lights up really nice and these can't rate them enough fantastic LED stop and tail completely cuts through the fog and the rain the wavelength is slightly different than the filament bulb so when it's misty or foggy the, this cuts through and it's a lot brighter than a filament but not too crazy bright but it's just just as you would hope for it to be and you get a full red effect as opposed to the filament which tends to localize with the red LED stop and tail you get a full uh, full red effect so I'm really pleased with the LED conversion and the registration bulbs highly recommend those the plate just jumps straight out looks smart and I've got twin twin light fittings it just brings that to a nice block looks really well so that's about it okay I'll, I'll get out of here now so I'm never gonna get out of here Catch you on the next video.